<laughs> yeah, so I am the junior high overseer, not the junior teams, which is grade seven to nine. And uh, I'm so excited to share communion with everyone here tonight. I uh, absolutely love it. Not only, not only could we get to have a little bit of juice, a little bit of bread, um, but also I get to share with you guys one the greatest, like the greatest news you could ever hear. And that's news about Jesus tonight. And uh, like I've only got about five minutes, but I don't need to sugarcoat the gospel. I don't need to add anything on it. Uh, because the gospel itself is some of the most amazing news you could ever hear. Uh, the news about Jesus, how he's actually died for us, and how he's actually taken away all our sins, is uh, something that we need to hear constantly. And as we just comprehend God's amazing love, God's incredible love for us, uh, it's going to be amazing tonight. Uh, so I'm going to speak from Psalm 65, verse 3, and it says, I've actually memorized it, and it says, yeah. Uh, as for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. And uh, it's quite an amazing verse. It's really simple. But when you think about it, uh, when you think about the context and you think about who wrote the psalm, it's quite amazing. And uh, David actually wrote this psalm. And it's quite amazing because when you think about David, uh, he was one of the greatest kings, one of the greatest kings ever, ever to walk the planet. He was actually one of the greatest people of God to ever walk the planet. Uh, Jesus himself is actually a descendant of David. So this guy's pretty amazing, right? Pretty amazing. But the amazing thing about, about David is, is that he was full of transgressions. He was full of these things that maybe weren't so good. Or he didn't, you know, didn't live up to the perfectionism that we thought he might. And uh, Having a look through the Psalms, you see, you see all the time, absolutely all the time, just, you know, David was full of abundance, full of blessing, full of these great things. Uh, but on the inside, he actually had a lot of turmoil. And uh, when he poured out his heart to God, there was fear, there was weakness, there were so many things going on on the inside. But when David wrote this, you've got to understand that he wasn't just a worshipper. He wasn't just a man after God's own heart. He was also a prophet. And when David was speaking here, he was speaking of a time to come. In his mind, he actually saw Jesus. He actually saw his descendant on the cross. He saw Jesus. And he knew that although we all, like all humanity, have all these imperfections and all these transgressions, he knew, he knew that he knew that we would have atonement for those things. And I just reckon, like, I, I'm so full of full of those things too. I'm definitely not perfect. I'm definitely not the greatest. Uh, I'm definitely not, definitely not, um, definitely not perfect. But, um, and everyone here is like that too. I mean, like I may look okay on the outside, uh, but on the inside, on the inside, uh, there's just constantly a battle, constantly a battle in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. For everything that God has called me to do. Um, but I had this awesome revelation when I was thinking about this and just meditating on this. And it's simply this, that although none of us here, none of us here are exempt from imperfections, all of us here, as we're in Christ Jesus, are exempt from condemnation. And I just reckon so, so much tonight that... Um, that none of us are perfect. We're, we're not going to get it all together. We're not going to have it all together. That's never going to be the case. But if we would actually just put our faith in Jesus, if we'd actually just look to Jesus and look to what he did for us, we have justification. We have something that we can hold on to. We have something that we, that we can actually justify ourselves with. The cross. And although we don't have it all together, although that is the case, Christ died for us. Paul said, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, while we still have these things going on in our lives, Christ died for us. And that means incredible things. That means the world. And um, I just reckon, church, that tonight as we have communion together, it's awesome just to, to think about this. That together, we realize none of us are perfect. We realize that we won't have it all together. 
But one of the most incredible things we can realize tonight is that through the love of Christ and through the love of God and what he has actually done for us, that we can walk away victorious, that we can walk away free, that we can walk away whole, that we can have atonement for the things that we've done. Isn't that awesome news, church? And I uh, just want to finish off this awesome scripture. I just absolutely love it. Uh, it's about comprehending God's love. And uh, I think that's what communion's all about. Just, just coming to a knowledge and coming to a revelation of God's incredible love for us. Because uh, it is so deep and so great. Check it out. Paul says this, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. That's what we're doing here tonight. How wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's what Paul says. I reckon tonight, church, as we just start to comprehend what Jesus has actually done for us, just as David saw, just as David saw his descendant on the cross dying for him, if we can do that tonight, maybe just we can walk away from communion with a thankful heart, with a glad heart, that Jesus, although we have all these imperfections, we're not perfect, we have transgressions and weaknesses and fears and all these things going on, but as we're not perfect, we remember Christ how he's taken us from that place into the place that he has called us to be. Let's pray tonight, church.